In today's episode, we have Paloma Garcia Lee from Steven Spielberg's hit movie, West Side Story. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that successful people know that they are destined for great things even before they make it. The truth is, so often, we let our circumstances fool us into thinking that things can't work out for us. Whether it's a lack of money, education, or support from others, successful people don't convince themselves into thinking that their current reality is what their future will be. They know their circumstances are just that, temporary. When we look at some of the most successful people in the world, many of them didn't come from ideal circumstances. For example, comedian and actor Jim Carrey was homeless prior to getting his big break in Hollywood. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was put for adoption growing up. He dropped out of college and started Apple from his parents' garage. He was completely broke and collected soda bottles to recycle so he could earn money for food. Today, Apple is a multi-billion dollar tech company and Jim Carrey is one of the most notable actors in the world. So what do all of these people have in common? That they saw beyond their circumstances of poverty and let their passion drive them forward despite obstacles. If you have a dream, don't let your circumstances fool you into thinking that dreams aren't possible. At the end of the day, who you think you are is ultimately who you become. As Wilma Rudolph quotes, never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, Steven Spielberg is one of the biggest Hollywood directors in the world, you know? So how was that experience working with him and, you know, him giving you this opportunity, especially because this is your first feature film? Big deal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It is, um, you know, he's the most generous man. Um, sometimes, you know, they warn you, like, don't meet your heroes or these people that we really look up to maybe aren't so kind or so generous. Um, he is more incredible, generous, artistic, wonderful than I could ever have imagined. And he just gave us so much his generosity, his, um, you know, he showed up to ev every day on set, ready to work, ready to explore, ready to ask questions, ready to trust everyone who he hired. I find so often as an actor, you're hired and then you are micromanaged in the work yeah. and you're not able to kind of step in and, you know, give what you have to offer. And he had such trust in us. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have actress Paloma Garcia Lee from Steven Spielberg's hit movie, West Side Story. Paloma, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to meet you and chat with you today. I'm very excited to speak with you. I was just telling you, I love your hair. It's so unique and original. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> we have so much exciting things to talk about, but I want to talk about the start of your career. I heard that you made your Broadway debut at 17 years old. So let's talk about that experience. I did. It was so wild. You know, walking into a career in the arts, you never really know exactly how it's going to unfold. And at the time, I had graduated high school in three years. I was very antsy to get out and start auditioning and working. And I went to an audition that went okay, nothing remarkable or anything like that. And that ended up leading me to my Broadway debut that early in my life, which was just, you know, such a testament to you never know how things are going to unfold. But it ended up just being the greatest gift. So I made my debut in the Phantom of the Opera. 17 wow. years old. It was so special. I ended up spending four years with that production as well. And I was playing the principal role of Meg Jerry. So it was truly, um, I couldn't imagine kind of a better way to kick off, uh, you know, what turned into a 13 year career on Broadway uh, wow. that way with that show. Yeah. And I know you went to school for this, but what is it about theater and Broadway that really sparks your interest? You know, what's actually really funny is unpopular opinion i never intended really for a career on broadway oh. but it turned into being this kind of incredible journey but i actually had been on the ballet track for a long time in my childhood which is something you know i rarely speak about but then from there i actually quit dance entirely to focus on acting and wanted to do shakespeare and film and tv and so i actually moved to new york with the 
hope and anticipation of maybe doing some straight plays, getting into Shakespeare, auditioning for film and TV right away. So this kind of um, very scenic route on Broadway uh, kind of took me by surprise. I mean, I always had an interest I always had respect for theater, I think I'll say that. My mom was a Broadway performer, my parents are in the arts, so I've always been surrounded by musical theater, and it's been on the periphery of the things that I've wanted to do, um, but little did I know that I would truly get to immerse myself in it, and I think it's a blend of so many beautiful things. You know, I love dancing, I love singing, and I love acting, and of course Broadway is the meld of those three things, the triple threat kind of community, so um, I, lo I loved it even more when I stepped into it. I think the first foray into it, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll do this for a little while and then, you know, get back to my true love, which is acting and storytelling, especially in that way. But um, I was able to meld everything that I do, yeah. all my skills, which is great. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like Broadway is one of those things, and theater is one of those things that you really have to let go of your inhibitions and step into character. Um, so was that something that always came naturally to you or was it something you kind of developed? I think like both, you know, transparently, I'm a homeschooled only child. So that comes with okay. me being like a very specific type of person, um, you know, and then I ended up going to boarding school to focus on the arts. So I've been I've been always very driven. I've been always very committed. And even when I was doing ballet or in, when I was in school, I was always put into parts that were kind of like the more character parts um, that someone really needed to emote and go there. And I tr I don't. I don't fear going there as a human, as an artist, any of those things. I love throwing myself fully into really anything I'm doing. I'm I'm not really like a 50-50 person. I'm like, it's either nothing or 1,000%. Mm -hmm. So I think that really lends itself to acting because I love digging into character and kind of living in the story and putting on, you know, kind of that, that other human for a little while. I think it's a really beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. And how do you get into character? Because I feel like you have to have a lot of confidence to step into it and really immerse yourself into it. So do you have a method or, or how do you kind of step into your roles? You know, I think it kind of depends on what it is. You know, sometimes I like living in it like if, you know, the character has an accent or the character has specific mannerisms. I kind of love putting those things on all the time around the work or especially like with the moment I step into the rehearsal room, kind of being that person. Um, I don't really love the feeling of kind of just like joking around or whatever and then, you know, they're calling action and then you step into it. I love living in it a little bit more than that. But then sometimes, you know, I think it's dependent on what it is, you know, if you're dealing with you know, heavier material, keeping yourself in a really specific mind space and just again, like living in that character moment. But it depends and I'm still playing around to be honest with you about kind of what works, but I, you know, what I'm learning, I think it's going to be very project specific of kind of what's needed for the role. Yeah, absolutely. I need to get some tips from you because I feel like when I go to auditions, I find it really hard to like really step into character and not feel self-conscious. So I need some tips from you. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it is that thing, right? It has, it's like no inhibitions and being yeah. able, because what we do as actors and performers or anyone really in the arts, it's so vulnerable. We're walking into these spaces, especially auditions where everyone is sitting behind a table, arms crossed, just being like, okay, well like show me, okay, let's go zero to 1 million right now. And it really yeah. does take that in Exhale, exhale and trust in being like okay I'm gonna give you everything I got and you know it, it might totally work it might not work but that's the vulnerability of an artist which is what I continue to be so drawn to especially with acting is just um the humanity the vulnerability the empathy the bravery yeah. that we have to you know possess all the time to be an artist yeah, absolutely. And you transitioned into theater, into acting on screen. I know you were in Foss and Verdon on FX. So let's talk about that experience. Well, that was so wonderful. You know, again, since spending 13 years on Broadway, always wanting to do film and TV and truly going home at the end of my Broadway shows, often being like, well, I'd like to move to LA. I want to do acting. I really want to get back on track with what I felt I was intending to do and how beautiful that the universe has put these two first projects on camera for me. It's kind of been this incredible seamless meld moving in, right? Because, you know, getting to work on five episodes of a show about Bob Fosse and Gwen Burton, you know, huge influences in, in theater on Broadway and all of those things. And so being able to continue to incorporate my skills as a dancer and a singer but stepping onto a TV show was such a seamless transition. And then that was such a beautiful um, <laughs> kind of, I don't want to call it practice because that's not what it was, but I learned so much in that experience to then be able to step into West Side, which again, I'm getting to flex even more as an actress, but I'm still getting to dance and yeah. incorporate that. So it's been this amazing transition and I can't, I really can't, couldn't have wished for anything better than that. You know, I think there's such a stigma in Hollywood against, um, 
again, you know, people being like, oh, I know people can dance, but can they act? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, oh, they're a musical theater performer, so they might be a little too much. And all of these things, what we're getting to show with these sorts of projects, the richness and depth that those of us who are coming from the stage can bring. So I hope, you know, moving forward, especially with, you know, Ariana DeBose and Mike Feist and all of these beautiful people who are coming from Broadway, proving that, you know, we have a voice and um, something really big to share on screen. I think it's a really exciting thing personally and um, kind of at, in Hollywood in general. Mm -hmm. I like that you said the universe because my show we talk a lot about the universe and the law of attraction so I like that you said that word it kind of like triggered I was like whoa maybe you manifested this into your life <laughs> I am the biggest manifester I am oh, the biggest wow. believer in like what's meant for you won't pass you by I'm deep into the law of attraction oh, and the Abraham wow. Hicks work all of that has so deeply influenced my life and um um, I've spoken about this a little bit, but I actually wrote down in my journal in 2018 when I saw the release come out um, that Steven was doing West Side Story. I wrote down in my journal, I am playing Graziella wow. in Steven Spielberg's West Side Story and just put it out there and completely released it to the universe. And it's just, wow. it is amazing how I, I believe in the power of manifestation and writing down and speaking and, you know, daring to, daring to dream our biggest dreams and trusting that, you know, things will unfold in a really magical way if we allow them to. Wow, that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> that was that was powerful because you know manifestation is real, and if you really believe it and you do the work, it does manifest into your life. Let's talk about congratulations, by the way, on this huge role as Graciela in um, West Side Story. You know, it's such a big role. But for our viewers that don't know, let's talk a little bit about your character. Amazing. Yes, it's so funny, Graciela. You know, she's so many things. Sometimes in the past, she's been what I would call reduced to Riff's girlfriend. Um, and it, you know, she's she's usually with him in the piece. They have a really big feature in Dance at the Gym together. But what's amazing about, we're dealing with a new script from Tony Kushner and this reimagining that we've done. And so Graciela, you know, for I'm not gonna give any spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but um, you know, the women in this reimagining really have a more powerful place in the story of what has in the past been such a masculine driven you know production and so it's amazing how you know we really see Graz step up to the plate as a woman who fights for other women and stands to you know no matter what the differences are put those aside to make the world a better place and try and help others and i think that's what's deep about this character this time around is in the past we know her to be um you know, a sassy, strong character. We know her to be an amazing dancer, um, but we don't really get to have that fleshed out emotional life with her. Mm -hmm. So we really get to see more of her in this, which is amazing. Um, yeah, it was such an amazing experience filming it. Oh my gosh, I couldn't talk for eight hours about that. <laughs> yeah, and speaking about the experience, I did read on your Instagram that you said it was a dream role and it was life changing. So tell us more about that and that feeling. Yeah, you know, again, it's just amazing how things unfold in life. Um, I find so often we as humans cling to our deep ideas of how things should go, when things should arrive for us. And, um, you know, this this production and this experience arrived as such a surprise moment in my life. And it is. I've watched the 1961 film my entire life, and I would come back to it. And I always was drawn to Graziella. She's such an incredibly strong, powerful dancer woman in these in that film. And so I always have wanted to play her. And so many opportunities have come that I thought might be the right one um, when they were reviving the show on Broadway or all these other examples that had fallen through for me. So then, you know, never could I have imagined back then that I would have this opportunity to play a role that meant so much to me. And then again, for this to be kind of my introduction into Hollywood, for my first film to be a Spielberg film, for my yeah. first role to be one that has meant so much to me since I was a child. Like just so many deep layers. Um, I'm so grateful. Uh, I come back to that word so often with this because you know so many people spend their entire careers hoping to work with Steven Spielberg or hoping to step into a role that you know maybe they know or meant a lot to them. But that's my first film my first experience yeah. um you know and only from here i'm it's expanded me into all of these other things that i want so like i can't it's hard to say what an amazing starting point because it feels like such an incredible accomplishment as it is but it truly has just like opened my eyes to all that i want and has completely inspired me you know i've moved to la now i have stepped away from broadway um more formally and just am really chasing my dreams on a whole new level now so what an impactful art experience to have where, you know, through that, I was given the opportunity and finally was brave enough to truly go chase my dreams now, um, 
knowing that they're not so far. I've lived I've lived so many of them out and then this one on such a huge scale already. So yeah. it's really exciting for what's to come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Steven Spielberg is one of the biggest Hollywood directors in the world, you know? So how was that experience working with him and you know him giving you this opportunity, especially because this is your first feature film? Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is um you know, he's the most generous man. Um, sometimes, you know, they warn you, like, don't meet your heroes or these people that we really look up to maybe aren't so kind or so generous. Um, he is more incredible, generous, artistic, wonderful than I could ever have imagined. And he just gave us so much his generosity, his, um, you know, he showed up to ev every day on set, ready to work, ready to explore, ready to ask questions, ready to trust everyone who he hired. I find so often as an actor, you're hired and then you are micromanaged in the work yeah. and you're not able to kind of step in and, you know, give what you have to offer. And he had such trust in us and made each of us feel so seen, so cared for, so respected. And, you know, the bar is now set so high. I've had a few people be like, well, don't get used to that because that's not what the experience is. And I'm kind of been like, well, why can't it be? If, mm -hmm. the, if arguably the greatest director of all time <laughs> yeah. can be this kind, this generous and take people. He had such respect for dancers, such respect for those of us from the theater that it really, um, it's opened my eyes and kind of been like now in any experience where someone's like, oh, well, you're coming from Broadway. Well, we know you can sing and dance, but can you act? I'm like, well, Steven Spielberg knows I can act. So yeah. I don't know. Why don't you call him? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it's been yeah. a very interesting it's... experience of um, <laughs> having someone at that level, feeling so seen by someone on that level and someone who is so, um, the, word, the word generous is really what sticks out to me generous and loving to us all that um yeah the standard is very very high now so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know some of the biggest actors that i've met they've all been so humble i feel like when you're humble and you're real and you're authentic that's how you have longevity in your career because people like you and they want to work with you and you know and you I think that's so important. So I like that you said that he's very kind and generous. That's, that's really great to hear. And you know, our show is about inspiration. I created this platform to inspire. So I want to ask you, what, what's a, one piece of advice that you would give for someone going through a hard time? And what are some challenges that you face along your path to success? Because obviously, you know, auditions, lots of no's. It probably wasn't an easy path. People see you now, you know, in a movie with Steven Spielberg that he produced, but I'm sure it hasn't been easy. So let's talk about those challenges and what piece of advice would you share for our audience going through a hard time? Yeah, I think, you know, I think remembering that everything is relative. So, you know, especially as an artist, well, no, I think as a human, we just continue to grow and go through hard moments in our life. And there are these peaks and these valleys and neither can exist without the other. Mm -hmm. The highs in life would not be so high if we did not experience the lows mm -hmm. and believe in ourselves and trust in ourselves enough to get through them. And then we, you know, we it's this constant ebb and flow of things. So of course, as an actor, um, I'm auditioning all the time. I hear no all the time, but it's this moment of trust in what's meant for me won't pass me by mm -hmm. and the right things will align and they won't have to be so hard. Yeah. And so even if that's no for a really long time, I have a deep trust in what's coming is coming and how can I be more present and enjoy today and enjoy this moment and the process? Because you know, no matter what, you audition, you get the job, you do the job, and then you're back to auditioning for other jobs. And even, you know, actors at the highest level hear no all the time, but it's just something that we don't focus on. We focus on the Instagram real highlights. We focus on people think it's just yeses all the time and all of this amazing, you know, these amazing things. But I think having a deep trust in oneself, cultivating a life that feels balanced and wonderful to live in every day, and then just dreaming forward and trusting that each day if you're doing a little bit towards what you love, what you want to do, who you want to be, um, that's what leads to a more fulfilling and um, sustainable life. Because if we're just looking for these high experiences all the time, um, that's just not how it works. So it's amazing to be rich, multifaceted humans who go through wonderful and painful things and how we can bring that forward and know that we're all going through that experience together, I think is really unifying. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you said, you know, that you received a lot of no's. You know, we all do before we get into the industry. Yes. It's a it's a list of no's, right? Some people just they get a no and then they think, OK, I'm going to give up. But, you know, 
it's also synergistic what you said because the intro of my show today is about how successful people knew they were meant for great things even before they succeeded and you know i talked about jim carrey i talked about steve jobs that they were homeless some of them were homeless and they didn't come from ideal circumstances yeah. and yet they were great because they believed in themselves so i love that you said that because it really fits into my intro and the you know law of attraction and believing in yourself so i love that <laughs> Yeah, and it's also that at that point where even when you reach success, you're still going to hear no. Yeah, there's still going to be things that don't work out. There are going to be roles that you want more than anything that are going to be no. But you have to trust in those moments yeah. that you know something. There's another plan that is going to work out. So these things that we cling to, and we're like, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to do? What now? Like the people who are going to see you will see you so clearly. You will mm -hmm. be invited into spaces. And yeah. so I think keeping that student mindset and like you said, staying humble and knowing that um, life isn't this track. It's this and down and up and around and yes. all the corners, mm -hmm. but that's the scenic route. And I would rather live a scenic life than, you know, I think there's something to wanting and not getting and wanting and going through these. So then when you do get these incredible opportunities, they're not lost on you. You're not like, oh, whatever, well, I get everything. That's not fun. Yeah. That's not rewarding. So I think just really holding that, you know, keeping that student mindset, staying humble, staying in the work and continuing to dream bigger and bigger and keep challenging yourself. Um, you know, oh my gosh, I get like excited talking about that. Yeah, absolutely. If you didn't, if people didn't have failures, you wouldn't, be feel that hunger right to succeed you need to go through those failures you need to feel miserably sometimes so that you have that hunger and then you're not going to grow as a person right as well if you're not going through challenges and you have to like tell yourself okay i'm going to do this i'm going to get back on my feet so you you need that you know it helps you grow as a person so i love this stuff too i could talk about it all day but paloma what's next for you what, what are your current projects so right now I've moved, so I've moved my entire life out to LA. I was nice. kind of balancing back and forth for a little while and tiptoeing around that. So I recently completely settled myself in Los Angeles. And now my work is assembling my whole new team out here. You know, we just finished a bunch of press and everything for Westside, which has been so exciting and oh my gosh, so thrilling to go through. And now honestly, I'm auditioning and just stepping into this new introduction to Hollywood in this big way, meeting with directors and casting directors. And um, there's a few projects that I've been going in for right now that I'm up for that are just dream level, so exciting. And just um, challenging myself, stepping into this new, what feels like a new life, new chapter, and also at the same time, what I've always meant to do, what I've always been meant to do. So kind of like two lanes right now of just really getting myself back to work, grounding in who I am and making this introduction in Hollywood now. Wow. Well, Paloma, the sky is the limit for you. Congratulations on this role. Congratulations on all your success. I, you're going to be winning Oscars one day. I see it in your future. And I hope that you can come back <laughs> again and, you know, share all your success stories. Thank you so much for being on the show and uh, yes, hope to see you soon, you. maybe in L.A. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love that. Thank you. And we manifested it here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much and talk soon. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly high, high.